Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. We've got a great show for you today, including another chapter in the Design Handbook with Jim Hall. But now the news. Automakers and suppliers in the U.S. market are starting to worry about a price war breaking out this summer that could hurt profit margins across the industry. Yesterday, we ran into Mike Akavitti, the Vice President of Marketing at Honda of America, at the launch of the Acura MDX, and asked him how he sees the situation. Now, while some of our competitors are resorting to high fleet or high incentives in order to move their cars, we can rely on the merits of the vehicle. The Accord's just that good of a product. Price wars are usually started by car companies that are losing market share. So far this year, Mitsubishi, Mazda, Volvo, Nissan, Toyota, and Volkswagen have lost share in the American market. And speaking of Honda, the company just cut the price of the Fit EV in the U.S. Customers can lease the car for $259 a month. That's down from $389. That's still more expensive than the Nissan Leaf or Chevy Spark, which you can get for $199 a month. But the FIT's three-year lease involves no down payment, unlimited mileage, routine maintenance, collision coverage, and a 240-volt home charging station, even though customers have to pay for its installation. The FIT EV is only available in California, Oregon, and most of the northeastern states. Traditionally, the term utility vehicles referred to commercial trucks and vans. But now, it's the hottest part of the passenger car market, according to Ford. Most industry analysts would probably define today's utility vehicle as a tall, two-box design with a higher seating position and a big lift gate. But Ford's head of marketing, Jim Farley, says it's more than that. He says their market research shows that Consumers are responding to the proportions of the design, the proportion of vehicle height to ground clearance. I sure would like to know more about the specifics of those proportions, but Farley isn't sharing any more details. He adds that Ford is either in first, second, or third place in every utility segment, and that segment is booming in every market in the world. Pollution in China is so bad that the city of Beijing is taking matters into its own hands. It's imposing a pollution tax on cars, the first city in China to do so. It's another tax on gasoline, which brings the total to $1.62 in taxes for just one liter of gasoline. BMW pulled the wraps back on its third generation X5. It can be equipped with three different engines a gasoline V8, a diesel inline six, and a performance diesel inline six that uses three turbochargers. All three engine types are mated to an eight-speed automatic. BMW refers to this X5 styling as an evolutionary development of body design, although it appears that only a few changes have been made to the front and rear fascia. In fact, when compared to the previous model inside profile, they look nearly identical. The X5 will hit showrooms later this year. You know, sometimes car companies get a really good idea for a new vehicle, but then stumble on the follow through. Jim Hall has one such case study from 2006 as we get into the what were they thinking section of Design Handbook. Here's Jim. What were they thinking? For the 2006 North American International Auto Show, you had concepts from each of the big three. Chevy Camaro, Ford Spectacular Super Chief pickup, and then there was the Chrysler Imperial. A great name, but the product looked like the result of a drunken one-night stand between a Rolls-Royce Phantom and a Checker Marathon. <coughs> it was poorly proportioned and incompetently surfaced. The Imperial was big and imposing, but in all the wrong ways. It had rear suicide doors that were an obvious tip to the Phantom, which is a neat thing at the time. The interior was really top-rate. Nice materials, expertly used. The problem was the interior being done so well made the exterior look even less professional. 
At the rear, they paid homage to the original gun sight taillight seen on mid to late 50s Imperials in a clever and really well executed way. So what we have is a spiffy interior, a pair of really interesting taillights on a great historical Chrysler nameplate. Pity they forgot to do the rest of the car. For Auto Line Design Handbook, I'm Jim Hall. Yep, could have been a cool car. Stay tuned to Daily for future editions of Design Handbook, and if you have any topics you think that we ought to cover, email us your ideas to viewer mail at autoline.tv. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the all-new Kia Cadenza. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Kia has been one of the fastest growing brands in America. The little brother to South Korean giant Hyundai has increased market share each year thanks to a smart strategy of popular commercials starring its dancing hamsters, effective marketing partnerships like the one with the NBA, and of course, a stable of good-looking small cars. But that stable may have to expand a bit as Kia goes big with its next new entry. We're going into new space for us. We launched the Soul, the Forte, the Sorento, the Optima, the Rio, uh, the Sportage, and every one of them has enhanced that brand perception from the Kia of old to wow, you're building beautifully designed vehicles filled with technology, great safety, uh, you know, uh, great fuel economy, innovative powertrains, it's all there. When customers were coming in for Optima, they were saying, love the car, I want more. I need something a little bit bigger, I want some more bells and whistles. The cadenza is the answer. In our, what we've learned is that there is this emerging space between mainstream and luxury, and the cadenza is gonna fit right in there. Their customers ask for more, and that's what Kia is giving them. This car is actually based on the Optima, but it's bigger. Three inch longer wheelbase, five inches overall, one inch taller, but it's not just about being bigger, it's also about the technology inside. So for us, uh, really the play for us is technology and refinement. Uh, our Optima has a turbo four cylinder, this has a V6, 293 horsepower V6, so it's our most powerful Kia in market yet. And on top of that, we're introducing new technology that we've never had on a Kia before, uh, the advanced smart cruise control, which brings a car to a complete stop if necessary, uh, lane departure warning. Uh, the front headlights will move depending on the, the direction of the steering wheel. So a lot of neat little features. And also, as we do have in the Sorento, and also in the Forte, we have the new Uvo e-services, which is really kind of fills out that technology story. So technology and power are really the two areas that we, we see an opportunity. The Cadenza comes in three trim levels, which are priced between $35,000 up to just over $41,000. Kia believes it'll sell around 12,000 cars by year's end and is hoping to ramp that number up next year when it has a full 12 months of sales under its belt. Even though it's been sold as the Kia K7 in Korea for the past couple of years, as the Cadenza, it's just now available in U.S. dealerships. Hey, before we go, I want to remind you that Jeff Owens, the Chief Technology Officer at Delphi, is joining us on AutoLine After Hours. And Delphi is a supplier that's always been at the bleeding edge of technology. So join me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo to get an insider's view of what's going to be in your car in the future. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.